So uh, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lisa and I'm the teacher here at Piano Video Lessons. I have a YouTube channel. You might be watching me on YouTube right now. Um, and I have been teaching piano since I was in university and that's a long time ago now. But I teach live here in my home studio and I teach on YouTube. I have a whole series of free video lessons for beginners and advancing piano players. So if you just got a new piano or if you're thinking about learning to play piano, I just thought it would be helpful to give you a primer on all the things you need to know to get a good start. So looking at your instrument, you might be a little intimidated. We might use terminology that you don't know. So I'm going to just go through everything here on the piano that you might need to know and that you may already know some of, uh, but it'll get you the foundation that you need in order to start uh, with lesson one and begin to learn playing piano while reading music. So the first thing that we'll start talking about here is the geography of the piano keyboard. So the piano itself is made of keys, white and black. I'm sure you noticed. And there is a pattern to the black keys. And these help us establish the pitches within the music. But you'll notice that the lowest, uh, if you have a full size 88 piano keyboard, I guess I'll start with that. Um, some of you may be learning on other types of keyboards, not just pianos. You might have a digital piano or or a digital keyboard or some type of organ. Any type of keyboard instrument uh, can get you started learning to play and read music. And if you are working with a full-sized instrument, it's going to have 88 keys. And it's important that your keys are full size, that you're not working with mini keys, because if the keys are small, then the reaches will be different. And later when you're trying to, um, when you, if you advance to a full-size instrument, you'll find that it's, um, you'll have to relearn some things. So if you're serious about learning to play, make sure that the keys are full width, that in each individual key is uh, full size. And it will say that in the description of your instrument. So the black keys are arranged in groups of two and three, except for the very lowest key on your instrument. If it's an 88 key piano, you'll have a single black key at the bottom. And people ask why. And the reason is that the piano started off a certain size and over the course of its history, it just kept getting bigger. And eventually they needed to add another black key at the bottom in order to accommodate these lower notes. But generally, the piano black keys are in groups of two and three, going all the way um, from one end of the piano to the other. So we're moving through, uh, I'm just playing all the black keys, the groups of two and groups of three. So if you're sitting at your piano right now, you could do the same thing. You could play through and just use any fingers you like and play through all the groups of two and three black keys. So you can start at one end and go to the other, or you can start in the middle and work your way out. You can use your left hand, you can use your right hand, but you should start to really just look at the groups of black keys and see how they follow this pattern. Now you do use both right and left hand to play piano and something that we'll often reference is up and down. Now, up and down, it might be confusing if this is not a term that you're used to hearing. If musical terminology is new to you, then up and down might not be something that you uh, relate to in terms of music. But when we speak about going higher on the piano, we're talking about moving in this direction. So these notes are going higher. So I like to think about visuals. You know me, I always like to compare things to other things. And so I like to think about something that will be maybe high in the sky that could make a, a sound that relates to these notes that are at the, at the right hand side of your piano keyboard. So if something is high in the sky, maybe it's a bird or raindrops are coming from up there. So if you can relate these notes up here to something that's high in the sky, you'll run, you'll relate the sound of the notes approaching these pitches as moving up or higher notes. And then of course, we've got notes at the other end or the left hand side of the piano. And these notes are very deep. And we call these low notes low. And if you think of something that's very low, you might think of a whale at the bottom of an ocean or a shark, something that's very deep and low. 
Um, or you could think of something like an elephant that definitely can't fly. So it's a low and heavy thing, a dinosaur even, maybe not the flying kind, but you know, the lizard style of dinosaurs. Um, these notes here on the left hand side that are generally played with your left hand are low notes. So when we're speaking about piano keys, we do speak about low notes and high notes. So you're getting set up, so far so good. Um, you've got white keys and black keys and low notes and high notes. These are some very good terms to know. And now we're gonna talk a little bit about the white keys on the piano because we've recognized the patterns of the black keys. We haven't yet mentioned the white keys. So the white keys actually um, are named with letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. In other parts of the world, they name them Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do, but I live in Canada and here in North America, we name them according to letters of the alphabet. So they, they just go in a cycle, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and repeats. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. So if you look, when I said A, B, C, I landed on a note here that's beside two black keys. And then D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and again, I'm in between two black keys. So these black keys um, allow us to anchor the white keys in a cycle of seven. Because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white keys around these five black keys. And then it allows us to have another group of seven. So just seven letters of the alphabet. Um, I have a video on the letters for the piano. Um, I'll link it in the description here just to this video if you want to watch a, a more detailed description of letters. But I'll give you a couple of tricks right now, and maybe that's all you'll need. So here is the one white key that's between two black keys. And if you think of this as a small house, these two black keys are like a small house. An animal that lives in a small house could be a dog. And the letter D starts the word dog. And so all of the notes that are inside of two black keys are notes that are called D. So here we have a D and a D and a D. And all of these keys in between two black keys are Ds. There's lower Ds going down deep on the piano keys. And there are Ds that go higher up the piano. This is the highest D there is on my piano. So if we're using the alphabet, the notes beside D are C and E. So we have C, D, and E, and C, D, E. Everywhere we have two black keys, we have three white keys, and they are C, D, and E. C, D, and E. Now that's covered all of these ones, and we have these four in between that we haven't yet named. And so we could just, you know, reference them all from D, D, E, F, G, A, B, so F, G, A, B, but let's kind of anchor these. Let's look at these two notes here in the middle because we talked about this middle note here as D. And if we look at these two notes in the middle, this is the end of the alphabet G and the start again of A, the musical alphabet. We only go up to G in the musical alphabet. So when we get to this G, we start again at A. And if you're an English speaker, maybe you had a baby in your life somewhere, then the first word that baby might say is something like Gaga. G A, or you can think of Lady Gaga if you know that pop star. So uh, I don't know her personally, but I've heard of her. So G and A right here are beside each other, G and then A in the order that you would write them in English. So G A, G A, G A, G A. And so in this house here is a baby and the baby says Gaga, G A. In this house, there's a dog and the dog starts with D. Now, beside the note G, we have an F, and beside the note A, we have a B. So we have F, G, A, B, and you could practice that by playing them all. F, G, A, B, left hand, right hand, F, G, A, B, F, G, A, B. So as you're playing these notes, I really recommend talking to yourself as you practice. My best practice sessions always involve me saying things to myself while I play. So whatever I'm trying to learn, if I say it, my brain has to pay attention because I'm not just doing it 
absentmindedly. I'm thinking about it, I'm saying what I'm doing, and then I'm doing it. So as you play these Ds, D, 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 say that that's a D, say it out loud so you can hear yourself say it. And as you play the Fs, F, 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 say F out loud, but practice naming all of the white keys. Think about the dog in his house, think about the baby in this bigger people house, and practice the white key names. So we've learned now that there's patterns of black keys and white keys that fit inside. We've got low notes, we've got high notes. And the next thing that we're gonna need to know in order to play the piano, or you might actually have questions about when playing piano, I'm just gonna flip this over here to an image, is the pedals on the piano. So if you have an acoustic instrument, there's a chance that you have three pedals on your piano. Most grand pianos with the lid that opens and closes have three pedals. Some only have one. If you only have one pedal, you have the right hand pedal, the, the pedal on the right foot side. So that's the pedal on your right here and I'm, I'm pressing it now with my right foot. And all that does is it lets the notes continue to ring after you finish playing them. And it holds them open. It's called a damper pedal. In an acoustic instrument, it releases dampers and allows the sound to ring. So that's your damper pedal. If you have a pedal, a second pedal, but only two, the one on the left-hand side, um, that is called your una corda pedal. It's Italian for one string. And what it does is it makes the notes a little bit softer, a tiny bit quieter, changes the sound, the sonority of those instruments. So if you use the left pedal, you would say, una corda in your music, and it would allow the, the sound to be a little quieter. If you have a grand piano or a digital piano with three pedals, that middle pedal does a special thing, which is it allows one note that you're pressing to ring, but the other ones... That one will ring because I was holding the pedal, and the, um, the other ones won't ring because I wasn't holding them down when I pressed the middle pedal. It's called a sauce, denudo pedal, or sauce for short. Okay, so now you've seen everything there is to see. Well, not everything. You've seen a lot of things about how the piano works. And the next thing, let's turn this off. Here we go. Uh, the next thing that we could talk about is your posture when you play piano. So something that's super important, I'm just going to angle this camera slightly differently so you can see the piano a little bit more and perhaps even a little bit of my knees, etc. here. When you sit at the piano, a little table in the way, you want to make sure that the distance you have here is comfortable. So I'm making straight arms and my, my elbows are not bent and I see that I can make fists that sit at the far back side of the black keys here. And if I look underneath the piano, my knees are just underneath the edge of the, of the front of the white keys. And my bench is far back. You can't even see my bench in this video because it's I'm only sitting on the very front of the bench. I'm perched on the front. And I can put my foot on the pedal, if I have one, with just my toe able to work it going up and down. But um, the most important thing here is that you're not sitting too close. The parts of your body that matter when you're playing piano um, are pretty much your whole body, but your arms need to have some freedom of motion here. So you need to be able to move your elbows in and out. And if you're sitting too close, your elbows are gonna be stuck beside your body. Body. So you need to be back far enough that you are reaching slightly forward and also sitting high enough up, your bench needs to be adjusted so that you are not uh, putting any pressure on your elbow or on your wrist, I'm sorry, any pressure on your wrist from your elbow. So my elbow is elevated above my wrist and my elbows are just slightly out to the side in a relaxed way. But if you just like reach up over your head and then let your arms float down onto the piano, they will land in a comfortable manner. Um, we also wanna have relaxed curved fingers. We talk about this in some of the other lessons, but basically this relaxed curved shape is whatever shape your hands take when you normally just let your hands fall to your sides. If you just look at your hands when they're not doing anything, that is your relaxed hand shape. So if you just take that and turn it over on the piano, that's the right posture to be using. There's no tension being created and your hands are ready to play.
Uh, we play on the squishy tips of our fingers on, on the pads, not on the fingernail and not with flat fingers, but just on that squishy pad. And we play on the very edge tip of the thumb. So we don't play on the, our, on the end of the thumb, we play on the, on the edge tip. So the other fingers, the thumb is a little bit elevated here and you can see it's just falling nicely from my hand. All right, so now we know lots of things about the piano and we know, here we go, um, we know our, our uh, posture to use when we play. The next thing we need to know before we start piano lessons is the finger numbers because your piano teacher is gonna talk about your, your fingers a lot. And we can't always be saying things like pointer finger or pinky finger, So, or we could, but in music, on the sheet music, we're gonna to wanna to write things down. So we describe the fingers by numbering them. And the first finger that we number is the one that you only have one of, and that's your thumb. So your thumb is number one, you have two thumbs, they're both number one. You have right hand number one and left hand number one. And the next finger is number two, simple, that's finger two. Next we have finger three, and then we have finger four, and last we have finger five. So pinky is finger five, left hand five and right hand five, thumbs are number one. All right. So we're learning quite a few things, aren't we? We've got low notes and high notes, black keys and white keys, letters on the white keys, finger numbers. We're set up to play with good posture and we're ready to use the instrument. You might wanna ask me about the names of the black keys and I'll tell you that they're called sharps and flats for now, because they have some different names and you don't need to know that today. But, Let's learn a first piece of music. Now, you don't know how to read music yet, so I'm just going to give you a little code here that will help you to learn to play this nice, simple song. So here are some numbers. Now, are numbers on the white keys or are numbers on our fingers? They're on our fingers. So these are finger numbers, and we're gonna play a song just with finger numbers, and this is just to get you started. Once we start to learn uh, to read, to play piano, for real, we're gonna learn chord symbols and we're also going to learn to read on the staff. So if we're gonna play this with our right hand, most people are right-handed, so we often will start with the right hand. We're going to play finger number three first. And I'm just gonna place my hand here on the white keys with my thumb on C, my two is here on D, my three is on E, and then my four is on F and my five is on G. So my hand is just resting on these keys. I'm not forcing them to stay on the notes, just relaxing my hand on the keys. And I'm going to play each finger number that I see on this page. So if you're sitting at your piano, I would hope that you would give this a try with me. So we're gonna start with right hand finger three, and we're gonna go nice and slowly, and we're gonna play down three, two, one, and then back up two, and then three threes, three, three, three. So here it goes. Three, two, one, two, three, three, three. Now, do you notice when I'm playing my three, 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 that my hand is doing a thing? It's going three, 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 because I'm not playing it just like typing a, a key on the, on my keyboard, on my, on my computer keyboard. I'm I'm pressing my wrist to lift into those keys, like kind of like if I'm walking and I'm moving my weight around. All right, so let's do that first part again. Just the first seven numbers. Here we go. Three, two, one, two, three, three, three. Now I'm gonna do three twos. Two, two, two. Again, I'm pushing that wrist, rolling a bit forward. This is the proper posture and technique to use. You'll have lots of time to develop this during the course of lessons, but it's good to know that that's the target. And then we have three, five, five. So here we go. Three, five, five. So I just dropped into three, then I moved my weight to five, and then I replayed the five. Now we'll do the next line. It looks a lot like the line before, but there's an extra three. So three, two, one, two, three, 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 three. Now, this time you might ask, how am I doing this? I'm rolling my weight. After I put the weight into that first note, I'm just transferring it between each finger. Now let's finish it. Two, two, three, two, one. Here we go. Two, two, and then roll two, 
one, once my weight is in, it rolls across. So I'm trying to keep a relaxed hand, a relaxed arm, a relaxed posture. Everything about this should feel comfortable. Um, if it doesn't, you need to just go a little slower. Just take it easy on yourself. All right, so let's just do the whole thing from the beginning. And I'm going to say the numbers because I think you should always talk to yourself when you play piano. Here I go. Three, two, one, two, three, 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 two, 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 three, five, five, three, two, one, two, three, 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 two, two, three, two, one. I lifted in between those last notes as I played them. All right, I'll say hello to you again here. Um, so th those are basically the things that you need to do in order to play piano. If you've played through those things with me just now, then you are ready to start to play um, unit one of my free online video series. Um, year one is the series that I created that helps you learn how to play piano from very beginner all the way up to being able to play arranged piano classics. And it takes about a year for most people to get all the way through and a really serious student can get through it in six or seven months. But there's no pressure. So I call it year one. Take your time. It can take two years if, if it does. Don't don't put pressure on yourself. I think one of the most important things that adult learners need to do is just learn to relax. You're playing piano because you want to. You're learning this instrument because it means something to you. And putting pressure on yourself will we'll just take the fun right out of it. So just relax. Enjoy the feeling. Enjoy the sounds. Don't judge yourself too much. If it doesn't work out, just take a breath and try again. Uh, but but what is next after we've learned the things we did today? Let me just quickly review them. Low notes, high notes, black keys, white keys. We have left hand, right hand. You knew that. Fingers, one, two, three, four, and five. And white keys named C, D, E, and F, G, A, B. And then we played our very first song here called Mary had a little lamb in case you didn't know the tune. Um, but the very the very next thing that we would do is we would start to learn how to read music. And I'm just going to pull up a quick example here from um, this is from the PDFs that go along with the free videos. You can purchase the PDFs. They're not very expensive. You can buy them in a bundle if you think you want to commit to the whole year. But the very first thing we do is just give an overview of playing on the staff and something else that we do um, is well, I'm, I'm gonna say two things at once here. I like to lay, lay the foundation and then pull it apart and build it back gradually. But I'm just gonna turn on some more technology here because I do teach live classes and I also teach um, some group classes that are actually starting in January for beginners. There's still a little bit of space in my class that starts on January 10th. So you can look into that. I think the link is in the description. It's definitely on my website, uh, pianovideolessons.com. You can see it right, right there. <laughs> um, so, when, we're when I'm teaching these live classes, some of the things we'll do is we'll use some of this technology. Um, I use it with my Zoom students as well. But I was gonna show you this other cool thing, if I can just turn it on quickly, which is the staff right here. Um, and I have to turn this guy off for a second. And that guy too, my goodness. Here we go. Um, so here we have a demonstration of the staff. And we talked about high notes and low notes. And when we go up the staff, so oh, there's a note, I'm playing it. You can see as we go higher, the notes on the staff go higher too. And this makes sense visually because the sound is going higher. The position is also going higher. And if we're going down here, we can move into this lower staff. And as the notes go lower, the visuals go lower too. So learning to read music can seem overwhelming. I'll say that for sure. Um, but also it's something that we do take one step at a time. So instead of just doing, you know, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, what kinds of notes there are and what they look like on the staff. But the very first thing that we actually do is we focus on just two notes. We focus in on C and G and we learn where they are on the staff. So right away, we're, we're focusing in on specific two specific keys on the piano, two specific notes, and learning how to play. Uh, we have some flashcards that go with it and learning how to play a very simple song using just this note and this note. 
We're going to talk about rhythm and all kinds of other great things in our beginner classes. But what I did want to, to, to mention and to demonstrate today is that the class is designed for someone who doesn't have any musical knowledge. Um, if you want to start right at the beginning, you'll get everything that you need to get started. If you already know a little bit, you can start maybe in on lesson 20, and that's in unit two. And that's where we start to introduce playing with both hands at the same time. Maybe you have a little bit more experience. You can start in on unit five, where we actually do um, some chord theory and play using lead sheets, which is super fun and um, a great experience for people who want to learn to play with a band or improvise and all kinds of other great stuff. So that would pick up in unit five. And uh, what was I going to say here? Oh, yes. So I mentioned this already, but um, if you're interested in learning along with me, with, with feedback from me directly, I am also teaching an online beginner class. It's four months long. And uh, we have biweekly um, live lessons where students join me on Zoom and I can teach you in real time. It does follow the same framework as the year one free video series, but yeah, I include a lot of extra materials. And also I coach you personally when um, I watch you play. So you can either play for me in real time or if you're too shy, we have a group, a Facebook group where you can post videos of some things you have questions with or just demonstrations about yourself practicing. My experience is, is that the group is amazing and people just love it. Um, it helps them see where other people are struggling and succeeding and it makes you really comfortable that you're learning at a pace that's perfectly normal and you get lots of praise and support from fellow students. But um, I do have a few couples, a few couple, I do have a couple of spots left in my January class um, for if you wanted to join us in a live group. So uh, in case you didn't know, my website it's pianovideolessons.com. You can get all the information or you probably check the description as well um, here on wherever you're viewing this video. Now, um, I wanted to mention, in case you're not sure, like what is what can I learn during the course of this um, experience? I've recently posted a video, a student spotlight featuring Peter, who um, never played piano before, wanted to learn, found my free videos, bought the eBooks, practiced by himself, and then he reached out to me about two or three weeks ago with a question and because he wanted to join my beginner class and then he sent me a video saying, I'm not sure if I'm a beginner. He was not a beginner. He had finished unit six. And uh, so he allowed me to use the video that he sent to show what you can accomplish completely by yourself. If you want to learn to play without any extra help, you can just use the free videos here. Um, I'm going to take some questions and answers really soon here. So I know there's a few comments that have come through while I've been yammering on here, but now's a good time. If you want to ask any questions, you can post those up um, wherever you're viewing this video. Um, but basically, yeah, if you're going to learn to play piano, now you know everything that you need to get started and you can just jump right in with unit one or jump ahead to some other spot here at Piano Video Lessons on YouTube or pianovideolessons.com is the website. Um, all the material is available in both places. There's no charge to watch the videos. All right, so I'm going to have a look at these comments and see if anybody is asking me anything pertinent. Um, so uh, I'm just going to scroll up. I see I see Wendy um, was ex extremely happy that she learned something. That's kind of awesome. Uh, <laughs> and now you can learn some more just by heading on over to the uh, to the website or the YouTube channel. And now I'm just going to have a look. I'm reading some comments. I am sorry, I can't multitask very quickly. And um, I'm glad to see that Wendy talked to herself as she was reading through this. And let's see here. Oh, and I've got another testimony here. Sadat says, I studied by your video series from her website. And now I can play piano with a good background knowledge. Keep watching her. Thank you so much. I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, I definitely try to lay a good foundation. So a lot of things cycle through, adding a little bit at a time, either through the theory or the technical. I don't like to advance either thing too quickly, but adults tend to learn the theory faster than the coordination. Um, I've got some Merry Christmases here from Justin, um, Justin Stratton, and also from um, Sayali um, Bray. Um, and I also see uh, Yvette saying that she, um, she loves the way I teach and I'm simply the best. Look, I wasn't looking for compliments here. I was looking for questions. <laughs> um, but I'm happy to get the compliments. So thank you so much. Um, uh, Rabia is asking, can you watch the video later? Yes, I'm going to trim off the end part here and I'm going to leave all of the information on uh, for future viewers to watch. And then 
new comments. Okay, let's see. More questions. Um, so Samita says, I would like to join. So um, you can join the free videos just by heading to my channel here on YouTube, or if you're watching on Facebook, going to YouTube and checking for my channel, or if you're looking to join my online class, you have to go to the website and click the register button. So there's information about um, all, all that you would need to know about that. Um, Gokul is asking, how much time do I need to practice daily and how long to be able to comfortably play any song on the piano? Okay, I guess he means some songs on the piano because I'm gonna be honest, I've been playing the piano for 30 years and I can't play any song, like every song. I, there's some really hard songs out there, um, but to play lots of songs comfortably on piano, I would say that if you practiced for 45 minutes a day, every day that within a year, you will be able to play just about any song you want. So it's just a matter of being consistent and going over things that you've had difficulty with, you know, checking back over anything that was a struggle or you had questions about. Um, and so Sumita's asking about the procedure and also charges, what's the cost for the printed materials? Um, so the printed materials, you can purchase them by unit. So if you're looking at unit one, it's 16 lessons and the charge is $19 American dollars. And each unit has 16 lessons and each unit is 19 American dollars. But if you want to purchase the 96 unit, um, year one complete six, 96 lessons, complete six units, it's discounted to $88. So that would normally be like $116. I think that's the number that it would normally cost, but there are 88 piano keys and I wanted to give people a bargain. So it's $88 for all six units if you purchase it as a bundle. Uh, and then Sumita is also asking about the charges for a group and a solo. So the group information is all on the website. Um, it's a four month uh, live group class, which I coach all of you individually and personally. And the cost is only $2.99 US. Um, and it's valuable for you to get the feedback and also work in, as part of a group. It covers units one through four. It's a four month course. Um, and then I do teach one on one classes as well, but my time is extremely limited and I don't often register solo students. So uh, we won't really talk about that today. But we have a thank you from uh, Asmar. Um, Asmar, 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 you're welcome. And um, Kevin, Kelvin has a question about how to develop his ear. So really, it's a, a matter of, of playing guessing games with yourself and listening to the sounds of music and listening to hear um, whether the sound, how the sounds sound when they go up. Singing along is, is a helpful thing to do. Um, trying to match a pitch. If you hear someone singing like a note, like, ah, and you're like, oh, I got to write the first try. It was a C. So just matching pitch is another way. It's a gradual process for sure. Um, and then I have a question from Av. And Av is asking, how can we get speed? Meaning, how can we play for speed songs? By doing which practices can we get that? Okay, so Av is asking, um, when something is a very fast piece of music, how do we get the fingers moving more quickly? So there are a few exercises you can do for that. But first of all, you must be able to accomplish the thing that you want to do quickly at a slow speed. Because the secret to playing quickly is being able to play slowly very well. Then there are a few exercises you can try, one of which is playing the notes staccato. So you're just uh, playing them very quickly and then preparing to play them again. So that requires a lot more work than when you roll up and down, you can, um, you can feel the, the notes moving under your fingers and they, it feels much easier than forcing the staccato. Something else you can do is change the rhythm so that you're making one note really, really quick and the other one hold really long, then reverse it. And then play a normal. So allowing your brain to control the speed and also making some of them super fast and the other ones longer develops the speed independently of the entire piece having to go fast. The other thing is relaxation. We talked a little bit about that at the very beginning. And if you're not relaxing, you're not going to be able to play quickly because you're going to develop tension while you play. All right. 
Um, let's see more questions here. I'm seeing lots more compliments. I'm seeing some, this is great and thank yous and amazings. So that's awesome. Um, and I see Mr. Jones says I made it. I can't wait until the January class already enrolled. Awesome. Well, if you're already enrolled, then I'll be seeing you soon. Um, after the holidays start are over, we'll be getting the class, um, started in full for real. All right. So I, um, I don't see any more questions coming through. I do see that there are still a fair number of you watching and I thank you so much for your time today. Um, it's been great. Um, I really, I really get a lot of value out of messages that I receive from my students who are making progress with my lessons because I developed this curriculum completely. I've been teaching for many, many years. Um, so I know how learners learn, but I, I created the entire curriculum at pianovideolessons.com myself. And I did it with an, an idea that adults who are learning have certain skills and certain, um, certain challenges that they have to overcome in order to become pianists. And one of them is usually that they want Want to rush through learning. So when I developed the series, I wanted to make sure that I didn't let you rush, even though you wanted to. Um, you could rush still by not practicing sufficient amounts of repetitions or, you know, moving on and just watching the videos and not practicing. But if you follow the videos and you practice everything until it feels comfortable, then go on to the next thing and continue practicing and continue reviewing back through past um, exercises that we've done. I have experienced so many replies and, um, and emails from people who are really learning effectively if they follow the, the curriculum carefully. So that really makes me happy. And um, I think it's one of those, one of those things um, that, it, you know, some people are shy about letting me know how they're doing, but I'm happy to hear. So let me know. Um, I think this is strange. Rewiring my furnace thermostat, but you said pertinent questions like 22 degrees Fahrenheit. So now that I can easily see the D between the two black keys, the little dog has. Okay, well, <laughs> um, I can't help you rewire your furnace, but I'm so glad. Um, and then we've got the middle C exactly. So middle C is in the middle of your piano and it's right beside the doghouse. Um, Mr. Jones is asking uh, what should they do to prepare before the class starts in January? Really just make sure your tech is set up because you're gonna wanna be able to join a Zoom call. You're gonna wanna be able to put your device somewhere that you can angle it in such a way that I can probably also see you playing the piano. Cause I, if I can't see everything, um, it's gonna be difficult for me to help you. Um, Cause you know, I can listen, but a lot of what goes wrong is, is actually in the way you're playing, not even as much what you're playing. So important for me to be able to see that. Um, if you don't have a Facebook account, you can get one of those because we will be using Facebook as our interaction group in between classes. And, um, Aside from that, I think everything I gave you in this video just now is gonna be enough to get you started. And if you are already a little bit experienced, uh, we'll be sure to give you some supplementary materials that will keep you busy in between lessons and classes um, to keep you going. So hopefully that answers your question. Um, but um, bump, Don, Ronald is asking if I purchase all the printed materials, can I print them more than once in case they get damaged? Yeah, you, there are some down, you download them and put them on your computer and then you can print them from there. Um, as long as you don't delete them. <laughs> and if you do delete them, you can email me and I will send you a new download. So that's a thing. Um, all right. And I see that someone has a keyboard, a PSR i455. Can I join? Absolutely. Yes, you can join. As long as your piano uh, keyboard has white and black keys and it works, we're good to go. Doesn't need to be full size, doesn't need to be fancy. Anything that you have is great. All right. So I think we're going to wrap it up. This was 40 minutes. I thought it was maybe going to be 20. Um, it's so lovely to have chatted with you. Um, it always feels a little stilted for me though, because I'm reading your comments and I just love our group classes so much more because we can talk in real time and experience this all together um, as, a, as a team. So I hope everyone is safe and that you're having good holidays. And I'll thank you again for having joined me today and uh, wish you the best for the new year. Hoping 2021 brings us all lots of uh, happiness and freedom and good health. Awesome. Bye for now.